Yeah, money, money, money. Okay, let's, let's just continue. Okay, uh, of course, I want to perhaps to clarify an issue what we mean by urban and what we mean by rural when we talk about urban rural divide and the gaps. Uh, because in China now, about 120 million people from rural, 120 million people, permanent, almost permanently or constantly live in urban regions, but they are classified as rural residents by their hukou system. So they live actually in rural, uh, in urban regions. So by normal way of thinking, we would say they are urban residents. So when you calculate urban rural divide, you should classify those people into urban. But in reality, no, it's, uh, those people are not urban residents because they have no way of getting urban worker support and um, they still hold rural, rural hukou. So they are still rural people. And uh, in the calculation, uh, in most of the talks that we, we do tonight, and we classify those people as rural because their rule is still rural. They don't have right to live in urban permanently. Okay. So and uh, when you read papers, when you read uh, articles uh, on those issues, you have to be aware of those potential caveats. Because, for example, I say here income figure for rural migrant. In some literature, they classify this income for rural migrants as urban income. So by doing that, you will artificially lower urban income and artificially make a rural urban income guy smaller. Because those people are the people who are in the lower end of income things now in, uh, in urban regions. Okay? So be aware of all these issues when you read papers. So now, uh, I will move on to the consumption gap. People would normally say consumption and income is highly correlated. Yes, of course, but um, to a large extent, consumption gap can give you another, another idea of the scale of the gap. So, one way of doing so is to look at angle, angle's uh, coefficient. Angle's coefficient is a measure from the proportion of consumption on food. So this one gives an idea of, of the consumption gaps. So you look at rural angle's coefficient and then you look at uh, urban. Of course, you can say both went down along, along term. That means both of them uh, improve, right? But there is a constant gap between urban and rural, and uh, you see this gap become bigger in recent years. Okay? So now, people, another way to show there is a very big consumption gap is this. Uh, it's not only the indoor coefficient, so rural people spend more money on food, but also these things, you can see the gap in terms of consumption. As you know that in the uh, great farming period during 1959 to 1962, yes? Any, any of you aware of this even? Called great farming. It is claimed that 13 million people, half, of the UK's current population. So in the UK now we have roughly <coughs> 60 million and six, perhaps six, six and a half, 60, 65 million and uh, 30 million people died in the great farming. It is, as many people claim, the biggest farming in human history. And then some estimation says at least 20 million, some estimation size 50 million, but the consensus among economists includes the chief economist uh, Justin E. Fulian at the uh, World Bank. Uh, his estimation says roughly 
certain many people died or as a result the reduction of population levels so you can say when these people died they I, they were in urban regions or they were in rural regions so where are those people come from majority or if it's not all of them come from rural areas because urban regions were covered by the government scheme to guarantee the supply of food during that time whereas in rural areas there was no guarantee at all so people start to die and then this terrestrial so this can be used as a measure of urban consumption urban rural consumption gap of course in the reform period in the reform period the result uh, of uh, household responsibility system improves rural so they are free of hunger. So now the problem is to improve their living standard. So we can talk all this by all these different measures, calorie gaps and uh, angles coefficients and uh, some other things. Because uh, our class will very quick. Uh, on this one, and then move to the next. Education guide. Education guide, the, as you know, that the urban, in urban areas, education is largely provided by the state, but in rural, in rural regions, villagers, they have to fund their own schools to a large extent. Although the state has subsidized two of these schools, especially like middle, higher school, uh, high schools, but largely, especially at the primary school level, uh, local government has to fund all those schools. But the tax that those, those local government generated was not enough to support all those schools. So many, many schools, especially in primary schools, were left in a very desperate condition. And uh, so many places, especially the remote places, they don't have schools at all. And then all they their kids has to travel many, many miles in order to go to school. So as you say from the previous picture, so many kids has to walk tens of miles to school because of that, because of the lack of instruction in education. So the cost is largely on local people's, uh, local people's children during the new rural region. So the cost. And the second thing, even if you have school, because previously you have to pay a tuition fee, although by constitution nobody pays tuition fee from the first nine years of the education, but in reality they have to pay some other fees, the so-called other fees, so they can get around with those regulations and with the constitutional law what the student has to pay. And in this case, many kids cannot afford to pay and then they actually cannot enter school to have their primary education. So that you have this whole project in China called Xi Wang Hong Chang. All those people, uh, they rely on donations to go to school, on rely on donations to build their own schools. So this is cost. And then the level and quality is another problem because nobody or very few people actually want to go to rural regions to teach because the reward is very low uh, in terms of financial in, term, in financial terms. So they don't want to go to rural to teach. High quality teachers don't want to go there and then very often you have some rural born uh, teachers. They graduate for example from uh, middle school or high school, they teach all those primary school uh, kids. And then if you watch those uh, films, for example, one film called uh, uh, Not One Life by, by Zhang Yilong. Have you ever watched it? Yi Ge Do Right? So it's 